Hey, you're listening to episode 31 of the TA Pedals podcast. I'm Tristan. And I'm Stefan. Today is a terrible day. Why? I woke up and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terrible i'm just I mean, joking it's it's not a great day uh my back hurts pretty bad and it has been for like a, a little while and yeah. i just can't seem to get rid of the pain yeah i hate that for you that really sucks yeah. i mean we are getting older yeah i can i feel it now <clears throat> i've started to feel it in other ways like um like when i got gout <laughs> i was like oh my gosh i'm 70 already <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're we're getting older we're getting up there i don't like it me either uh i have noticed it takes me a long time to recover from things now and a part part of that is not because i'm getting older it's because i'm very unhealthy <laughs> like and by that i mean like i'm i'm out of shape and i don't eat the right food well i mean i feel like i'm pretty healthy um i you know, I watch what I eat and and I exercise and and I I just I don't get it. Yeah, like, it doesn't make sense. Like there, it it almost seems like what's the point? It's like you're doing all this stuff to try to be better and make your body last longer, but it's not doing enough. Like it, there's never <laughs> you can never do enough. You know? Yeah. So it's like I've read that um, like flexibility has been tied directly to longevity like the more flexible you are in general Mm -hmm. uh, seems to be an indicator that you'll have like a longer life and so we need to while our bodies are still elastic enough to recover we need to start stretching and stuff in particular and um i i saw a guy recently he was like 110 it was a video of him talking about like how uh how he's had such a long life and he said it was he would contribute 90 percent of his longevity to his diet like i mean that makes sense yeah like you know heart diseases and did he describe his diet um i think he said that it was almost a hundred percent plant-based but the thing is like i don't i think that you know people are individuals and we all have individual needs and was um, he super skinny no, no. Um, but he, he, I think he, like, had a very, very specific diet that he stuck to, and it wasn't a hundred percent plant based. Um, but I, I mean, it, just from what I know about nutrition and stuff from my wife, you know, having her degree in um, in nutrition, <laughs> um, it very much depends on what kinds of fats and and proteins and things you're taking in and animal based fats in the correct amount are good for you Mm -hmm. and your brain obviously needs Mm -hmm. it needs fats and your body needs carbs but it's the quality and the type of carbs and fats and protein technically your body doesn't really need carbs no it does (laughs) i mean that's my wife went to school for nutrition. I hate to disagree so strongly, but it I, does. I understand that, but our like humans in the like in the basic form, like whenever you know, before we could we learned how to do all of the stuff that we know how to do today. Like it was, uh, you know, just a, a scrounging diet, which was consisted of just meat and uh, you know berries and. And nuts and stuff like that. There's barely any carbs in any of those things. There's a, there's carbs in fruits and other yeah, plants and not, things. but not but not a lot. Like well, very a lot. Lo- very low amount. <laughs> but it needs it, and and a lot of what your body breaks things down into is glucose because glucose is required for um um what's the the molecule? I always always forget these things. Because I was I was a pre med major, whenever I was in college, um, and it's um, ATP adenosine triphosphate. Um, for for production of adenosine triphosphate, you have to have glucose, and so 
any carbs that your body takes in are broken down into into glucose but because like, that's the simplest utilization but you can get glucose without carbs because no. if you if you eat <laughs> if you eat an excess amount of protein your body will turn it into glucose i don't think so <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure I've, I've read that quite a few times oh well but i mean if agree I'm, to disagree if i'm wrong i'm wrong but <laughs> i'm i've read it on several occasions like several different occasions oh so well <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm not if an expert. i'm wrong then all those people who wrote all those oh yeah and that's possible are, all all of them are wrong <laughs> yeah that's possible though <laughs> um but as as far as um i mean like when when a lot of people especially americans think of carbs mm. um and I, i'm not saying you yeah are thinking this way but a lot of americans do um, when we think of carbs, we're thinking of like things like donuts and uh, no. bread and. I mean, yeah, I can see that. I can see a lot of people thinking that. Mm-hmm. Car- but there's a lot of like m- like carbs that are good for you in fruits and things. Yeah, and that's I'm, good. That's the natural sugars that come out of fruits and stuff like that. It's, yeah, yeah, and that's that's what you should have more of. Yes, like you, like. I don't you- disagree with that at all. <laughs> yeah. Any anyone who's more interested in a in a a plant-based diet like i'm not gonna ridicule them but it's it's the protein that you get from me is is the optimal source you know okay i mean not i mean (laughs) nowadays you have those you have the 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 protein shakes the protein powers and all that stuff where you don't have to eat meat to get your protein yeah but uh, is where does the protein come from in those shakes and stuff? Is it is it soy based? It says a lot of them say whey. Oh, okay. Which I don't completely know what you know what that's from. Whey is from milk. Okay, it's from milk products. So either way, you know. Yeah. You can't be a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that there probably are very specific. Um, vegan diets that, that I mean, work for you where you can get all of your nutrition they, they do have um they do have vegan protein powder drinks or whatever they're called um where they extract the protein out of you know plants and stuff instead of right an animal a lot of i think vegan protein comes from like legumes and stuff um but either way at the end of the day i i think that you know if you're not um morally compromised by eating animal products <laughs> then like animal fats um in the correct portions yeah are, and um obviously animal protein the correct portions being a ribeye steak yeah exactly <laughs> um <laughs> that's like that's the easiest way for your body to intake those um nutrients and break them down mm. it's uh instead of having something that's processed or or whatever and i'm not saying that all vegan food is processed or anything like that of course i'm just saying uh if you want a direct source i think that that's the easiest way to go is just get it from animals yeah Um, but i i will say fact i've said it before we've had a whole conversation about this on a previous episode factory farming sucks and i don't like when things die but like uh I don't see a solution for factory farming in a country like the United States. Yeah. And um, I'm not completely against natural killing. Like, so um, if I, if I were to think that like I was going to make a change, um, I, I wouldn't go vegan. I would start hunting instead. I would, I would hunt and um, use the meat that I got from, you yeah, know, like around here we have white tailed deer. You could survive on that really I mean, easy. Yeah. Then there's also rabbits. Yeah. Wescally little rabbits. <laughs> Shh, I'm humping rabbits. All right, well, let's end that video. See ya. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the point of the hand sign is so that we don't have to say that. <laughs> but it's okay. Well, we I, I like to say bye. Like, that? what if someone's only watching the video? They don't want to listen to the podcast. Then. Well, the I want to say bye to them. <laughs> say, Listen, you can do whatever the you video. want. Bye. Listen, just like <laughs> like we've said with our guests, like we've said with you know the things we've done in the past, and I've said it about you. 
I'm not here to censor anybody or control <laughs> what anybody's doing. Uh, that's what makes things interesting. I just think it's funny that it's like, hey, let's come up with a secret code so that we can just end the video. And so I'm like doing the Spider-Man thing or whatever. <laughs> and you're still like, okay, let's end the video. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! But it's okay. <laughs> it's just funny. Well, as long as it's, it's, it's the sign isn't so we can just... <laughs> So we can end the video. It's it's more like so we're both on the same page about ending the video. <laughs> for me, it's like let's turn the video off <laughs> because okay. So for anyone who <laughs> can't, didn't, you can't see me making the hand sign. But me and Stefan tried to come up with like a code, and I guess maybe we're not interpreting the code the same way because I thought it was like, hey, let's make this hand sign so we can turn the video off without having to say on the podcast <laughs> like. Time to turn the video off, and so like I'm, I'm a, like when we're about to end the video, I'm like doing like the Spider Man like web slinging thing, like where he shoots his webs. And I'm sitting here doing that. Go web, go. Go web, go. Making like the the sign language. Uh, that's the for B. That well, that's the uh, palm technique. <laughs> oh yeah, from Naruto. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it's just funny. Um, that's beside the point. But I like doing, I still, even if we were just going to say, let's in the video, I would still do the Spider-Man thing. What, I, I just like thought it. that, so like, <laughs> instead of like, hey, let's, you know, let's in the video. And then there's like a pause where we think about it, you know, like the high, the hand sign says, okay, let's in the video. And then that way we don't have to think <laughs> about it. It's like, you know, cause last time we did that, there was like a big old long pause <laughs> yeah, I know because I was doing it and I was like, I was like, turn your video off. Like, I was doing it, like, turn your video off, turn your video off, turn your video but that, off. But, but then you, you were just like <laughs> looking at me, like, <laughs> I'm like, turn it off so we can move on, turn it off. That's turn. why we came up with the sign <laughs> so <laughs> we know that we're gonna turn the video off. Listen, one of these days we're gonna have it together, we're gonna know exactly. <laughs> what is happening and we're not going to have to say anything we're just going to telepathically know what each other's thinking but that ain't today yeah so um (laughs) (laughs) after all of our issues with uh paypal and trying to get our our money and then being complicated and stuff we finally received a payout where we can order all of the parts and PCBs and enclosures and things for our Halloween thing. And we've been discussing that and pretty much, you know, the whole thing's going to be a secret, but we just want to give you guys a quick reminder that we are doing something really cool in October that I've never seen anyone else uh, really do as far as like giveaway stuff goes. And so we're going to come up essentially with a mystery that is Halloween themed, and we're going to drop clues throughout the entire month. And at the end of the month, if you can figure out the mystery, um, we are going to reward you. The first person who uh, figures the mystery out and emails it to us or, you know, however we're going to have you get the answer to us, the first person that does that is going to win one of our uh, very limited Halloween petals it's a halloween themed petal and that's all i'm saying and it's gonna be cool it and it and i was playing with it today and it sounds pretty cool yeah i i like i i like the way the circuit works with the sound like it's it does something pretty unique and i really like it it's got a um like weird like wavy thing going on yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, hard to it, explain it's like a slight like it's it's i don't know it's weird it kind of like if you were listening on headphones and you could hear like the shift from left to right if you can imagine that but in monotone like that's pretty that's pretty crazy yeah exactly that's what i was gonna say is that's the weird thing is it's not a stereo pedal it's a mono pedal but it still like has this like weird like filtering thing it's, it's got a, a a shift on it and it's kind of cool mm-hmm. and, and i don't know what to call that but it you know it's almost like um it's almost like phasing oh, a yeah. little bit it's like it's like phasing octave stuff going on but i <sighs> but i can't describe it because it, it it's not a phaser it exactly and it's it's like you can't really give it you can't really describe it in in a 
in terms that like are typical to pedals because the sound that we're hearing is not really typical for you know those you know those typical effects yeah um (laughs) i said i feel like i said typical way too much well i mean yeah but (laughs) i totally got what you meant and you're not wrong um i I also i'll say this about it if you're if you're looking for a weird pedal to make weird noises with um but still have something that's kind of familiar like this is going to be the one for you and to me like i i think i said it last episode to me this is more like a collector's yeah. type thing it's like a special edition like we're doing you know probably do the same not the same thing but like um have a, a limited edition halloween pedal next year too mm-hmm. maybe even just like a uh, a more feature rich version of this or something I don't know. We'll have to see what, what happens. It's a year away, but this is, it's kind of like a collector's thing, but it makes weird noises too. So if you're looking for something to help you think outside the box, check it out when we drop it. It, you know, it's, it's a, Tristan says it's like a collector's thing, but like I can see someone like someone who's looking for like a unique sound when you know like because it it has like your typical distortion kind of feel to it but it also has some weird um what it's the word um it's got some (laughs) some like modulation it's just no it's like uh it's i'm just gonna go fall back on the you know the word i've been using it's like this weird uniqueness to it that is going to make you sound different from a typical distortion or whatever like you know whatever you you're using um and it's it's like if you're if you're looking for something that's going to make you sound a little bit different than than this other band that's using the same kind of effect then that pedal is going to do it because it's very unique yeah to be clear for anyone listening when i say collector's thing it's not just a collector's thing it is usable (laughs) Like we wouldn't yeah. put out something that's like just a cash grab with if cool designs. But if you're it, a it co- sounds cool. If you're gonna be a collector of TA pedals, this is a pedal that you must have. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> if you don't have this, you're a fake fan. <laughs> fake fan. <laughs> uh, Even though there's there's gonna be a total of four made. Yeah. If you don't have it, even ten years down the line, fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you were our friend. Well, I mean surely find a way to get it eventually i, I mean, guess yeah unless it ends up in the dump <laughs> speaking of special editions <laughs> we haven't really publicized our special edition vampire squid much and um yeah we kind of just threw it out there and yep just like we said we we didn't it's like <laughs> we we had we went fishing but we forgot to put bait on the hook and we just threw it out there to see what happens. Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> we released the special edition Vampire Squid the day uh, after the buzzkill. Yeah. And because we were like, oh, hey, let's like kind of experiment with this and just see who gets it or whatever. Um, I didn't like post about it, but except like once. And mm-hmm. then it's been all, all about the buzzkill since then. Yeah. And that's on purpose. <laughs> like, uh, If no one picks it up, I'm I'm take it home. Yeah. For real. Like, I will be the one to have that special edition. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Buzzkill's been doing pretty good. And the more I play with it, um, the more I like it. I, I think it's really, really interesting. And I've been getting some interesting tones out of it. I've been using it on bass a lot. I turn the tone control all the way down. Use it on, uh, on bass with just like a tiny bit of grit. And it sounds awesome sounds yeah, the, so good the videos you've been posting have been really good I, li- I like the i like what you're doing with it thank you um it's been difficult to choose songs uh but i'm trying to you know because i don't listen to a lot of music with fuzz in it um and when i do it's like really ambient stuff like like for example when i play guitar the way that i think of things is um all of my dynamics processing first in my chain so like compressors um then after that, 
I'll have all of my dirt pedals. So, and going from like the least amount of drive. So like overdrive into distortions, then into fuzzes. Um, cause that's the way it makes sense to me. And then I run all of that into my axe effects. And then I have a cable coming out of my axe effects, um, that goes after my amp, uh, my amp block. And I think after my cab block too, actually. And then, so it comes out and then it goes into like all my modulation effects. So phaser, chorus, anything like that. And then it, that goes into my time-based effects, which is like delay and reverb. That's just the way I play. And I'm going to do some experimenting soon because I have some weird projects coming up. Um, but the point that I'm getting at is some people with fuzzes, they will put a reverb first and then a distortion. So they're, they're distorting the reverb to make like this big, weird sound. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's not something I would normally do, but I've been listening to a lot of bands. Um, for example, Holy Fawn. Um, I've really been, uh, loving them lately. Like that's almost all I've been listening to. If you haven't heard of Holy Fawn, they're killing it right now. They're on uh tour. They're about to release, um, a new album called Dimensional Bleed on the 9th this month of September. And it is going to be great. They, I think they put out three songs from it so far and it's, it's so good. And so they have giant pedal boards and, um, I've only seen one picture of one of the guys pedal boards and um, it's like a spaceship. It's really cool. And I've been trying to figure out how to get that big ambient sound um, because I have some cool reverb and delay pedals. Um, Like my avalanche run is like one of my favorite pedals ever. I'll never get rid of it. Um, The astral destiny is really cool too. And then I have that, um, Horizon Devices, Flux Echo. They're all very different from each other. And I think I'm going to try to put a reverb pedal um, before the um, my parentheses fuzz that I'm finishing today. And so maybe I can have like one reverb before into my fuzz and then into another reverb and see what that sounds like. It could be crazy. But anyway, yeah. I'm it's excited just, to, to hear that. I yeah. Make sure you video it. Oh, I will. I will. Because I have this, like, this big pedal board here, and then I have my little one over there. And up until this point, um, the little one I've, is what I've been using to uh, kind of make a home for my uh, blacked out pedal board mm-hmm. that I'm putting together. Like, um, I need to make a video about this, actually. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen pictures or anything... I'm, I've been working on a pedal board um, that is all the enclo- has all the enclosures with no labels. They're just matte black uh, enclosures with black knobs and any black hardware that I can put on it. Essentially, it's as close to completely blacked out as I can possibly get it. And um, it's kind of a small board and it's getting packed and the parentheses fuzz the one that I'm building is the bigger one. And so I think today after we're done and maybe after Sydney gets home, I think I'm going to take the big pedal board apart and rearrange things and put the blacked out pedals on this board. Um, I'm becoming more interested in using the pedals that I've made for myself to come up with like a unique sound. Cause I have some projects coming up, like I said, that are different from the stuff I've been doing. Um, I was doing kind of like, like some like weird ambient, like math rock type stuff. I I wouldn't say it's exactly math rock. Spending time is probably the closest I've gotten to math rock, but the rest of it's just kind of like ambient rock, I guess. And, um, now I'm going into like this weird space where it's like a mixture of like doom and rock and ambience. And, (laughs) A little bit of techno. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> electronic. Yeah. Um, uh, electronic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I've been waiting to finish this parentheses fuzz up because I really want to use it on the space thing that I'm doing. I'm going to put out that space EP. I can't wait to 
to help you with that. Yeah, it's going to be cool. So I, I'll, I'm going to tell people about it because it's not a secret or anything, and I don't know when I'm going to finish it. So okay. um, I'll spare you the details just because I don't want to ruin the story. But essentially, I'm going to make like, um, like an ambient soundscape type album, but it's still going to have like drums and stuff. It's going to be in the realm of... Um, well, it's it's. I don't know. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like a story. Yeah. With a technical music background. Yeah, it's not like technical in the sense of like like periphery or any band like that, but technical in the sense of like you're lots com- of layers and different you're composing it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's more it's more like like a cinematic yeah soundscape yeah but it still has like drums and distorted guitars at parts and stuff yeah so yeah and, it's gonna be cool and monologue <laughs> yeah and it's gonna have monologue because the story is about uh these astronauts and i'm, I'm gonna yeah cut not it. spoil it yeah cut it down real quick yeah i'm not gonna <laughs> spoil it and i don't want anyone to know like the main point of the story but um it's about these astronauts in the future who go into space and they're the first to test um, these like warp gates and then some stuff happens. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and me and Stefan are going to narrate the story and I think it's going to be really, really cool. We should, and, yeah. we should like set up like a pretend spaceship so we can <laughs> like really get into character. Get in, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to like role play astronauts. We can do it. We can. That'd be so cool. We need fish bowls put over our heads. Um. <laughs> oh wait, that that'd be more like a scuba diver or something. I don't know. We'll figure something out. It's gonna be cool. We could just wrap foil around our head. Well, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm an astronaut. I know, but pretend. I'm just we're kidding. pretending. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get we'll get lab coats. Yeah, and I can just imagine we just we need jumpsuits. Yes, what we need. I can I can just imagine though, like one day we're like (laughs) recording the monologue, and we have like white jumpsuits on and tinfoil wrapped around our heads, and (laughs) Sydney comes home from lunch and she hears like this music. It's like beep boop boop beep boop 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 boop. All these computer noises, and she like looks in here, and we're just sitting there like, hi. What are you guys doing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> are you from Alpha Centauri? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's it's gonna be cool, and I need to get back into making music, but I got to get ahead on all the TA pedal stuff first because we've been posting like Mad Men. Yeah. And it takes a long time to create all of that stuff. I can imagine it's awfully exhausting. It is. Well, because I mean, here's the thing though. I don't really play video games that much i don't really watch tv that much so like really any free time that i have is um you know going towards like the ta pedal stuff but if i wasn't doing that then i wouldn't be doing anything really so it's kind of keeping me busy in a good way but at the same time it's like i'm on a schedule and i think we have needed to be on a schedule for a while and especially since things are getting you know, more serious. And so like, I have like a whole month's worth of content like planned out and I just have to like work on, you know, making it like today, um, of, as you know, it's Tuesday podcast comes out on Wednesday. So we're recording this for tomorrow today. I need to do like a behind the scenes, like look at, you know, what we're doing and, and things like that. And so I'm probably, going to um give like a rundown of how i record the the tone videos that's kind of what i was thinking about doing is like showing how i make those and um i I don't know what it's about i haven't watched it yet um but jhs put out a video this is where i got the idea from jhs put out a video and the title was something like our pedal demo videos honest like because you know the idea that you could you could record a tone or whatever and i don't know that this is what they're saying so uh, you know i'll pro- i'm sure i'll end up watching it they they have great content but um i'm sure that like one of the points they're pr- 
probably going to mention is that like you can record a tone with a pedal in front of an amp and whatever. And then you can use post-processing, you know, to EQ it. Like if you were to record a video and um, maybe the pedal or the tone you got with the pedal wasn't bright enough. So you put an EQ on it and then that is a distorted um, per, you know, that distorts the perception of the sound that came from the pedal. And same thing with like, if you do any sort of mastering on the track, um, like if you change the, the equalization, if you compress it, anything like that, you're altering the way that that uh, sound comes out of the pedal. Mm-hmm. But that's actually where I think that I was a little smart about that <laughs> because I don't do any of that. Like I, I will, if I do drums, I use like a one kit wonder, um, a uh, kit from Get Good Drums, which is already processed. It's and I do that for two reasons, um, so I don't have to process the drums on the master bus like at all to get a passable sound. Um, but also for um, time's sake, I don't have to spend time mixing raw drums. I just program them for what I need and call it a day. Um, but then I also once the guitar is recorded. Um, I don't do any post processing on it at all because I don't want, you know, people to be deceived by what they're hearing and say like, you know, it, it's me getting in front of a camera saying, this is what, how I have the pedal set. And this is what it sounds like. I want that to be as pure as possible. Yeah. Even if it's like not a polished sound because, and I, maybe a lot of people don't think about that, but like the guitar that you hear on, you know, your favorite records or whatever surely has processing on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been mixed. There's probably been a low cut, uh, filter applied to it, cutting off everything below like a hundred Hertz or so, and probably everything above like 10,000 Hertz. Uh, there's limiting usually on guitars. So I, I wanted to avoid all that. So people can hear exactly what the pedal sounds like straight out of the box. And so I think I want to do a video today saying like, Hey, this is how I record all of the uh, audio for these these uh, videos, and you can see it's like completely unprocessed after my axe effects because I'm pretty much and I I use a very clean Fender amp in my axe effects so that any distortion um, that you're hearing isn't coming from like the amp being driven, and so I, I've taken all that into consideration. And I just want to give people like a true uh, sample of what can come out of the pedal, you know. And I've noticed, like, even you, even though I use an Axe FX, there's so many different amps that are modeled in it. The like our pedals, and this is true for any pedals, but the pedals sound very different depending on which amp you put them through. Like very different, they respond extremely different from you know depending on whether. It's, you know, a, a Fender, like a, a clean Fender Princeton or clean Fender Bassman. Like, I usually use a clean Fender amp so that it's like a familiar sound. And then I crank the fuzz into it or whatever. So that's kind of how I do things. And I, I just think it would be cool to give people an inside look at that. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> if anyone has, by the way, uh, if anyone has any suggestions of songs you you want me to play for those tone demos, like shoot us a, a message on Instagram or whatever. Like I'm, I've gotten pretty good at learning things quickly, um, and committing into like short term memory to crank those videos out. So almost every time I sit down to do one of those videos, I'm learning a new song, and um. Yeah, if there's like a certain song you want me to play, like I could, I know which one. I could probably do it. Can I can I suggest one right now? Of course, "Sweet Child of Mine." Okay, deal. <laughs> I got to learn the right way to play it. I already know how to play it a little bit, but like the root note, like on the do 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 do, I I don't change the root note, so I just play that same thing over and over again because I don't like Guns and Roses that much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I just never learned the real way to play it. A lot of people do though. Yeah. A lot of people are very big fans of Slash. I mean, yeah, how could you not be? He's legendary from yeah. the look to the, you know, way he, like, he phrases his 
uh, solos and stuff. Like, dude's a legendary. Just don't really like it. <laughs> anyway, I think if uh, if you put out, uh, you know, you playing, you know, one of a, a Slash song, which would be Sweet Child of Mine, uh, I think a lot of people would take to that. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. What pedal should I use? Um, you pick the song. You pick the pedal. The, <laughs> I th- I think just based off of of what I remember of, of what it sounds like, I think the shark probably would fit best. Think so? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I don't care. I'll do, I'll do I'll do whatever. Um, but depending on how you set up the buzzkill, the buzzkill could could hit that too so yeah it just i think it just depends on on you know how easy it is for you to find those settings yeah honestly any of our pedals that we've put out so far could could get in the realm of that yeah. um just whatever one's easiest to find it yeah yeah uh, i think i think the shark would be the easiest i think i think so too I, i'd have to probably dial the gain back a little bit on the on the buzz kill and then you know, with the the vampire squid, have I'd to have boost to like the treble on the on the buzz kill too a little bit. Mm-hmm. Which that's actually like my least favorite thing to do on that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it sounds good and everything, but like, uh, I've really been enjoying like the darker uh, side of it. Like anything anything below like eleven o'clock, like eleven from eleven to, o'clock to like um, seven. Yeah, seven or eight. That's like the sweet spot for me on the tone control. Yeah. I really, really enjoy that. Um, and then as far as like the sustain control, man, like anywhere from like noon up, you're golden. <laughs> and like you're just like once you get past like three o'clock, like you're just like experiencing like tons of compression and sustain. And it's that's a that's a wild pedal. And like the more I play with it, the more I love it. Cause like I, I've always loved it. But it's like, like the more time I spend with it, and f- f- more familiar. I mean, I it's get, your, it's, it's, it's your, awesome. it's your creation. Like it's everything about it is what you wanted it to be. So yeah, I like it makes sense that you'd love it. I fully endorse this pedal. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, I have literally no complaints, and like. Um, we were really rushing that pedal. We were rushing to, like, get the final one ready and to release it. But I, I here's the thing though: like, we weren't on any specific timeline. We just wanted it to, to get out. We wanted to put it out because um, it it's awesome. Yeah. And so, um, we like made sure the prototype worked. We ordered the final enclosures and everything, and got everything set in stone. And then, like, I made them, like, I put them all together, like, in the course of, like, one day. And after that, like, they were up for sale. But because I'm having to make demos for it and spend time, you know, giving sound clips and stuff, I've been spending a lot more time with it. Um, and, uh... I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's just it, the more time I spend with it, the more I love it. And, um, you know, Homer got a buzz kill from us and yeah. he loves it. He said it replaced like every big muff on his board yeah. and congratulated us on, you know, coming up with a cool version of the big muff. And I, I just, it, I guess what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is I understand now even more than I did before, why people love Big Muffs so much. They're so good. And I have my Green Russian, and it's pretty much the same as the Buzzkill, with a few exceptions. And so I still have like two different flavors of Big Muff. And they can do everything from like ambient drone stuff to doom metal to like shoegaze to like stoner rock. They're great. They're great pedals. That's all I that's all I can really say. Um have you been using your your prototype buzzkill? I haven't. 
<laughs> well, that's not what I I'm expected. Still, uh, I'm still... Um, right now, I have the, the squid hooked up, and that's what I've been using. But before that, I was using the shark for quite a while. Um, and I've kind of shifted back to the squid. Um, I don't know if... if I don't know when I'll you know, hook the buzz kill back in. Um, just this, the stuff that I'm like interested in playing is, you know, better with, you know, the squid right now. Right. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> what have you been playing lately? Um, I've been, I, I don't know. I, I've been, I wouldn't say, I, I really don't want to put, words on it but it's just (laughs) like it's more more or less like i'm just like um getting the feel for for the sound and like coming up with different random things and like just riffing yeah i guess um and like um i'll forget about it as soon as i put the guitar up (laughs) (laughs) but like it's um it's cool to to just sit down and and you know turn the pedal on and just like i hear i hear what's coming out and i just come up with something on the spot and and like that's that's what i've been doing i think that that's really good for like ear training and stuff too and like you being able to kind of hear something in your head and then be able to get it onto the fretboard is a really important skill so like there's nothing wrong with that like absolutely yeah um yeah have you still been playing your lightning guitar yeah that's that's awesome yeah i don't have i don't really have a a set place for it so i kind of just like i put it in the in a chair nearby (laughs) it's like i have the the sg on the on on a guitar stand and i don't want to put that up anywhere i want it to stay where it is because it's kind of like you walk in the room and it's like it's right there (laughs) so like i kind of just have you know, the lightning guitar just posted up in a chair somewhere. Still your favorite? <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't played the SG. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I I just go I just go pick up the lightning guitar wherever it's sitting, plug it in, and make sure it's in tune and start playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was um I was thinking about your Christmas present this year, and I was kind of thinking I don't know if you would want this or not, but. I guess I'm pitching it on air. <laughs> I was thinking about getting you some some locking tuners, like hip shot locking tuners for it to help it stay in tune. You wouldn't have to like worry about winding your strings or anything like that. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up and even asking you if that's something you'd be interested in if I decide to get it for you is because you have to decide on color. And I like the black ones. I don't know if you... <laughs> the, I mean, the guitar is black. Uh, it's got purple and white and then the regular wood so any you know i I don't think as long as it's within those colors i think it's gonna look good no matter what okay cool black would probably look pretty cool i think that would look sweet if they have purple that'd probably look pretty cool too they don't they have they have gold silver and black okay and so i'm obviously i'm pretty sure you don't want gold (laughs) like that would look weird oh or do you i don't oh I, i don't know (laughs) <laughs> but anyway, if I if I were to choose, I would go with black, but I go with black on like everything. Yeah. I think black would probably be out of those, black would probably be the best. <laughs> cool. Um it's got it's got like a, a darker it's kind of got like a mahogany or a kind of rose color on the fret yeah i think it's a rosewood fretboard yeah and then you know the rest of the guitar is black so yeah black black would probably be the best choice i'm gonna have to start shopping for for some uh pickups yeah my (laughs) mind just went dead dude i don't know what happened (laughs) i Uh, figured that's what you were gonna say yeah yeah. man you throw some some aftermarket pickups in there that thing is gonna rip yeah yep 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 i'm gonna maybe look into later adding another knob to do something else 
Who knows? I I um I was hoping that you would want to uh do split coils on the SG soon. I think that could be cool. So we could split the the coils of the the invaders and get a single like a single coil sound out of it and it would cost you know what it would cost Stefan? It would cost probably less than $10. <laughs> You have a whole other range of sounds by pulling an elbow. How do you? What do you? How do you do that? Okay, so let me explain. All right, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. So um, essentially, uh, you have to have four conductor pickups. So that means there is um, there's a hot wire coming off of each coil. So you know, humbuckers, two different coils. Um, then you have your uh, ground wire. And I guess like the, the wire, what's the fourth wire? I don't know. I can't remember, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like a bare wire. So anyway, essentially what you do is you have, um, a pot that has a push pull. Uh, You can do it with a switch too, but I like the push pull pots. Um, and what you do is you wire up the, uh, four or the, like the two hot wires that come off of each pickup um you wire them in such a way that when you pull up on the pot it grounds one of the coils so that way you're actually only tapping into um half of it half of it yeah and uh it's pretty cool because then you can get like like strat tones and stuff out of a guitar with humbuckers and it's a little noisier but like that's just like that's you know, part of it. Hey, if that's something that we're looking into doing for the SG, then you don't have to ask my permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's owned by TA Pedals. So. I guess that's true. I See, I did that on my, my white guitar. Because here's what happened with, with those guitars. I had my, my Ibanez, my blue Ibanez, um, and I bought that, and it had DiMarzio Fusion Edge pickups in it, which were pickups that were designed specifically for that guitar. Um, I wanted to put bare knuckle juggernauts in it, and so I did, and that cost a pretty penny. Uh, those pickups are, I think, a little over two hundred dollars each, which is stupid. I mean, they're worth it. They're really great. Bare knuckle is awesome. Their customer support's awesome. They're they're fantastic, but. Um, so I took the the Fusion Edge pickups out, and they're white. And then I found this guitar that was for sale. It it's like an Ibanez. It's like a a run of Ibanez guitars that were made specifically for Guitar Center, and they were made. I can't remember what year, but they were they were made like within a couple years, like a couple year span. Um, and they were sold exclusively at Guitar Center. Well, this guy had one. Um. I can't remember where at in Arkansas, but I found it on, I think Facebook or something like Facebook marketplace. And he was selling it for, um, 150. And I asked him if he'd come down to 125, which I mean, I would have paid 150 anyway, but he, he went for it and come to find out he was, which I wouldn't have actually haggled him down. And how I, had I known this previously, he was selling this guy's guitar collection for him. Um, and the guy was donating the money to animal shelters. And I was like, that's cool. So I thought it was just a yard sale. Anyway, he agreed to the 125. I drove all the way up there. It was like a hundred miles away or something like that. And I got the guitar and it's a, it's a white uh, Ibanez RG style. Is it that one? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. It's, it's this white one right you here. You paid $125 for that car. Yep. That I did. I sure did. And it's awesome. <laughs> and so I also, uh, I guess to go back to the other guitar, my, my blue Ibanez, uh, that is like my baby. I also switched out the locking tuners for hip shot locking tuners. Um, the other ones are, uh, the brand Goto. Uh, and so, I took the locking tuners and pickups off of my blue guitar and I just slapped them in <laughs> that white guitar. So I kind of have like the sound of the guitar, the blue guitar um, pre modification in that white one. It sounds a little different, but not much because um, they're both RGs and you know, whatever. 
I think they have the same scale length and all of that. So, but the bridge on the white one's kind of stupid. I don't really like it that much, but that's beside the point. Point is I threw, um, the white pickups in, uh, the white guitar and added the locking tuners from the blue guitar. And so I have two cool guitars, but the thing is on my blue guitar, it has a switch to split the coils um, I wanted that same functionality on the white guitar, so I bought um, a, a push-pull pot, and I wired the pickups so that you could split them. And there we go. Now I have two cool guitars, and I really only invested like a couple hundred bucks uh, in the guitar as a whole, and it sounds cool. I just I want to swap the bridge out because it kind of sucks, but um, it was like I. Th- as far as I could tell, I think that that bridge was only made for the Guitar Center uh, versions of these guitars, and then they like stopped making them, which was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't that good. It's it's um you can you're supposed to be able to attach a whammy bar to it, um, but I don't use that anyway. I just want a hardtail bridge. I'm I'm looking into getting a whammy bar. Really for the. With my Lightning McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're cool. They're cool. Purple, it's just not something I use. I, I got to name that guitar, huh? You do. Um, call it Chocolate Thunder. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's from uh the Cat in the Hat. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Really, I don't know. What? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to. I kind of want to name it like something that has to do with like Thor. I knew it, but it, it has to imply that there's some purple aura around it too. So I don't know. It is just. I got it. I got this. What? You could call it the Violet Thunder God. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, I'm not doing that. (laughs) Fine. This is a good shot, right? Yeah. (laughs) Let me throw off the top. You could go with you could go with uh lavender lightning volley. (laughs) I'm gonna call it the multiverse. There you go. I think that's already taken. Is it? Okay. Maybe no, it's not. Well, I'm the only like you seen the Doctor Strange movie and like oh, yeah. when he's in like the in between or whatever, there's like lightning and there's some purple hues around. So, uh, multiverse. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> uh, well, I think we're going to end the episode there. Um thank you for listening. It's been 31 weeks in a row. And we still out here 31 weeks in a row. We still out here talking. Yep, we're still talking. And <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, for real. Thank you for ep- thank you for episoding this listen. And we are 21 going. 21 more weeks and it'll be a full year. A full year. And uh, stay tuned to our social media and definitely be sure to tune in around october so that you can participate in our cool mystery giveaway and uh if you have any questions or comments or to- you want to request a topic for the show you can email us at tapedals at gmail.com or uh get a hold of us on instagram we are extremely active on there and we will talk to you on the next episode bye